You'll remember from the previous lesson that a vector is a set of values of the same data type. So here I have a vector of integers, 63182, and these are being assigned to this variable here, v1. And if I run this code, I get a v1 with all my values in it here. A list is a little bit similar to a vector, but different in the sense that the items in my list can be of any data type. You define a list with this function list, and then I can assign the first item in my list um, the value one and name that item here. I'm going to call it A, just to call it something. So the first item in my list, A, is going to equal one. The second item in my list, B, is going to equal this double value. The third item in my list is going to be a date. And the fourth item in my list is going to be this logical value true. So a list is a set of values too, but they can be not only any data type, but in fact, any R object. And the way a list is printed, because it can hold any R object, is that you have a dollar sign here with the name of that list item, and then the value, in which case this is a little vector with the value one, and then my B item in the list has my double value, my C item has the date, and my D item has the logical value. This example here shows a list of vectors. So instead of just single values in my list, this L1 list, in my L2 list, I have a set of vectors of different kinds of values. So uh, integer values, double values, string values. And you can see when I print out this list, my A has the first vector, B has the second vector, and C has the character vector. There's a function called names that you can use to return the names of the items on your vector. So this vector here had three names on it, ABC, and that was returned as a vector by the names function. We assigned it to this new variable, L2NMS, and that has all the names in it. Remember that our vector can be subsetted with single brackets. So here's our V1 vector from up above here. And if I want to get the second item in that vector, I can use the single bracket subset to return that second item, which is the number three. A list has a similar subsetting capability, but if we want to return the actual item from that list, we use double brackets instead of single brackets. So here I'm going to subset my L1 list. And if you remember that second item there had a double value in it, and I can return that using the double bracket syntax on my L1 list. And you can see the double value here. With lists, there's a couple more types of syntax that we can use to get values out of it. And the easiest and most popular by far is this dollar sign syntax. So this is my same L1 vector. And I'm going to get that same second item. But this time I'm going to use dollar sign syntax. And what you do is just say L1 dollar B, which is the name of that second item, and that will return the second item, just the same way as the double bracket syntax. And this syntax is generally much easier to use. This is the one that people tend to use when they're dealing with lists.
I can also, using the double bracket syntax, refer to a list item by its name instead of by its number, like I did up here. And so double bracket syntax, quote, name of the list item will return that same double value. Just like with the vectors, I can use any of those three syntaxes to assign a value to a list item. So here I'm going to say L1 list dollar B equals, and I'm going to then now replace that 3.248972 with this value here. And you can see when I then print out that list that my B second list item has the new double value in it. You can also use these subsetting syntaxes to create a new item on the list. This list structure is incredibly flexible and easy to use. All I have to do to create a new item in this list is use the dollar syntax with a new name or the double bracket syntax with a new number or a new name here in quotes and then just assign it to that new list item and you get a new list item. So here's my ABCD with the E new value 5.82348 down here at the end. And finally, if you want to get rid of an item in your list, you can use this special keyword here, null, which is used in a few places in R. Null means it's nothing, it's a null value. And you assign that list item to a null, and then that'll clear it out. So now when I print out that list, you can see that my E item is gone. The key points from this lesson are that a list is a set of R objects of any data type, which is different from the vectors, which were all the same data type. Lists are incredibly flexible structures. You can access any list item with dollar syntax or the double bracket syntax using either the position or the name. And lists are very often used as output from functions. Like if you want a function that um, will output several things, more than one thing, is frequently output as a list, a list of different kinds of stuff. It can be a list of data sets, a list of vectors, a list of whatever. So these are wonderful structures and you should get to know them. And how I suggest you do that is just simply create some lists, uh, make, make up some lists of things that you might want to practice with, practice subsetting those lists, practice assigning and deleting items from those lists, and just play around with them a bit um, until you're comfortable with them.